Today, I'm going to teach you how to make the glitch effect like you're about to see right now. In order to do the glitch effect, you're going to need a few things to get started. At least two video tracks and one audio track will be needed, but for this demonstration, I'll be using three video tracks, two audio tracks, and some extra graphics to tie everything together. I'll be using Adobe Premiere Pro for the demonstration, but this can be pulled off in most editing software, although the steps will vary depending on the editing software. First, let's look at how the final product looks on our timeline. As you can see, we have the three video tracks at the top and two audio tracks at the bottom, with the top half of the timeline having lots of splicing. Let's go ahead and play the timeline so that you can see how things look as the playhead passes through the timeline. Let's open up a new sequence to recreate this effect. We're going to choose a timeline with a frame rate of 23.976 otherwise known as the 24 frames per second format used in most North American films. Once created, we're going to use the files that I've already imported into Premiere to use for this sequence. First, I'm going to lay down the base audio track for our effect, which will create ambience in the effect and determine our start and end points. I'll be using music from my friend Beluga, who you can check out in the description below. I want the intro to be quick, about three seconds long. So I'll scrub through the audio to where I want it to start and set the endpoint with the shortcut I and then set the out point with the shortcut key O at about three seconds in. Then drag the audio onto the timeline. I'm going to put it as track two so that it's on the bottom of the screen. Zoom in and out of the timeline with the plus and minus keys to fit the audio how you like it. I want a more subdued sound than this, so let's slow down the track by pressing the R key and stretching the music until it sounds the way we want it. Switch back to the selection tool by pressing the V key. Next, we'll fade the audio in and out so that it starts and ends smoothly. I'll expand the track by hovering my mouse over track 2 and scrolling the mouse wheel. And then place the playhead at the beginning. Select track 2 by left clicking the track, and then add a keyframe here by clicking on the button to the left. Then, scrub the playhead a few frames in, let's do uh, 6 frames in, and then add another keyframe. Now we're going to click and drag the first keyframe down to create the fade. Now we're going to do the same for the end of the track, only this time I want the fade out to take longer. I want the last frame of the video to be at exactly 3 seconds, but the audio to fade out afterwards. Move the playhead to exactly 3 minutes and create a keyframe. And then we'll move a little over half a second to place our next keyframe. We can now shorten the end of the track. Drag the last keyframe down to fade the audio out. Next we're going to make the transition sounds and then edit the video track to the audio. Take any music you'd like and select a part of the music that has a very steady sound and bring it onto the timeline. We're going to chop it up into an audio stem, which we will clump into three sections. I want the transition to start right after we reach maximum volume on the ambient track so move to the first frame after, frame 7, let's turn the music into something that sounds a bit more glitchy. To do this, we're going to go to the effects tab and search for the effects low pass. 
and drag it onto the clip. In the effects controls, we're going to set the cutoff frequency to 4000 Hz. Depending on your audio track, you may have to change this number up or down to get the right sound. Now we're going to build the first section of the track by selecting the track, copying the track by pressing Ctrl C, and then moving over two frames to the right with the arrow key. Paste the sound to this spot with the shortcut Ctrl V and repeat this several times. Next, I'm going to duplicate this section of the track two times. Do this by selecting the whole section, holding down the Alt key, and then dragging the track forward on the timeline, and drop it into place. Do this again to make the third section. Now, I want to vary the sounds between the three files, so I'm going to add another frame of sound to the second section with uh, Control-V. On the third section, I'm going to remove one of the parts by selecting the part, and using the delete key. It sounds good, but we could use uh, something extra to make each one unique. So let's change the pitch of each section by slowing down the audio. We'll do this by selecting the section and using the hotkey control R and then change the value to something else. For the first track, I'll use 95. I'll keep the middle track the way it is, and then make the last track the lowest pitch, changing the value to 70%. Now, let's play it through and see how it sounds. Alright, now let's space these out so that there's a bit of asymmetry to the pacing. I want the last part to end at exactly 3 seconds, so let's go ahead and move it to the end. Now we'll move the middle section about a quarter of the way in. Let's play it and see how it sounds. Now that we've got the pacing figured out, it's time to edit the video tracks to match the audio. I'll open up my graphics folder and drag both of these to the timeline on tracks 1 and 3. I'll use track 2 for any extras. Now let's resize our video tracks to match the audio. To pull off the glitching effect, we want to make the graphics jump across the screen and vary in size. We'll use the X graphic as an anomaly and to counterbalance the image. Let's start by resizing the logo. I'll hide the X for now so we can get a better look. Select the track and in Effects Controls, we'll change the scale to fit the screen. Once we do that, we're going to chop the video tracks so that we can work on just the first frame. I'll select both tracks by clicking on track 1 holding control, and then clicking on track 3. Split the tracks with control K. I want the logo to be the center point, and then have the X be in the corner of the eye for the first frame, immediately bringing attention to the viewer that something's not right. To move the X horizontally, select the track, and in effects controls, change the first number under position, by clicking and dragging either to the right or left to change the value, moving the X until it looks good. I want a bit more weight to the left side here, so I'm going to duplicate the X to track 2 by holding the Alt key and then dragging and dropping the frame down. Now I'll edit track 2's vertical position by editing the second value under position and dragging it to move the X. Repeat these steps for the rest of the video, changing the size and position of the graphics to the tune of the audio. 
In some places, you may want to leave out graphics or have no graphics at all to transition the glitch. For example, here I left space for the transformation of the logo to an X before changing it to the logo again. At the end, I made the last frame larger so that the logo appeared to jump out at the viewer before the video ends. Don't be afraid to play around with this effect, where you can use some parts for flickering effects or even a transition in videos. Thanks for your time watching the video, and let me know in the comments below how you used this effect. This is Shawn Michael Jordan with Route 1 Reels, and I'll see you next week.